God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Indeed, God is good, and today is good. What a wonderful day. A wonderful day to be surrounded by the gifts of creation. A wonderful day to gather as church family and to gather as family. A wonderful day to be together as we gather with those who today celebrate their, their desire to confirm those promises taken on their behalf at their baptism, to celebrate with Taylor and Jenna and Mac and Ben and, as they are confirmed and welcomed as full members of Picto United Church and indeed the United Church of Canada. It is good to gather. As we gather in the celebration of confirmation, we also join in that celebration as we celebrate a love that is so deep and so profound that it changes our whole being and it changes the way we live and work in our world. It changes the way we interact with one another. It changes the, the way that we live and we give thanks for that. And we choose to live in that way of love, a love that as our faith explains it, we see made flesh in Jesus, but a love that we continue to live out in our lives. Because as I say many times, because the world needs us. The world desperately needs people of love and justice and kindness and compassion. And so we gather as those people. And as we gather in the act of confirmation, we also will gather around the table and celebrate the the sacrament of communion, which is for us the meal of faith. It's that meal that we remember all the meals that are shared as part of our scripture tradition, but all the meals that we've shared as part of our lives, those meals that nourish us and sustain us and allow us to be the people God created us to be. So we share in the ordinary and holy gifts of communion. For those joining us online, I hope that you've prepared your at-home communion that you may join us as we gather at the table in our worship today. As we gather, we note some announcements that are in the bulletin and a couple that are not there. But today is also a day for us to mark our 97th anniversary of this United Church of Ours. If you've seen some of my Facebook postings and my Friday email, Friday, June 10th, was the 97th anniversary birthday of the United Church, June 10th, 1925, the Mutual Street Arena, a hockey arena. How can you get more Canadian than that? The United Church, the first inaugural worship service. And this United Church was born with a vision of becoming an ongoing, uniting church. And so we celebrate that anniversary and that understanding of a church that was founded on that call that all may be one. And so we celebrate the oneness that we share in this place and the oneness we share with United Churches across our province and across our country. As noted in your bulletin, I invite you to take note of the various announcements that are, are printed there. One announcement that I unfortunately forgot to include in the bulletin is for Thursday night, but it is an important announcement. It's our finance and stewardship meeting and our bursary committee meeting. This Thursday, June 16th, 6.30. So members of the FNS committee, please add that into your schedule and I'll be sending out a reminder. Also, uh, as we gather, we continue to hold in our thoughts and in our prayers and care the the family of Helen Marks. A celebration of Helen's life was held on um, Friday at the Heatherdale Cemetery, and we certainly continue to hold her family and loved ones in our care. And I also invite you to take note of the invitation that is there for the graveside committal service for Marjorie Hallman. As you remember, we gathered in COVID times in February to celebrate Marjorie's life and um, because of the COVID restrictions, many were unable to be present, and so the family offers an invitation to all to join them this Friday in the Seaview Cemetery at 11 a.m. for that. Marjorie Henderson. 
Oh, did I say Hellman? <laughs> oh. See, Diane, you have me confused. I'll blame it on Diane. Marjorie Henderson, I am sorry, Marjorie Henderson on Friday at the Seaview Cemetery. So please take note of that. Also, th tomorrow night, I want you to take note of the announcement regarding our tapestry friends. And we're joining with the Queen in a Jubilee potluck. As noted there, the string orchestra is booked and the fine china will be ready. And if you have your tiara and crowns and jewels and you want to wear those, but please join us in a fun evening just to be together for our tapestry friends. And that's tomorrow night. We'll begin gathering at 5.30 and feasting begin by 6.15. And again, the announcement is there in your bulletin. We do celebrate life's achievements, and next Sunday we'll be celebrating with our graduates and our bursary recipients, and this Sunday celebrating with our confirmands, and we also celebrate those who are moving through life's passages. I know there's been some birthdays within our community this past week in South Indian Lake, our extended Picto family who are up in South Indian Lake, Manitoba. Manitoba. Connor turned five um, this week, and Sawyer turned one yesterday, and Lynn Logan had a birthday yesterday, and David Austin had a birthday yesterday. I, won't, I don't know, I won't say how old David turned, but I know that there's been some birthdays in this past week, and I believe Karen Hicks is having a birthday in the week to come. Any other birthdays happening? Celebrations? Anniversaries? Why don't we sing Happy Birthday? Happy birthday to Dave and to all celebrating special days in the days that have passed and in the week to come. And so we gather. We gather in community. And we gather as community. And we gather enfolded by love. And we gather knowing that we are love. We gather, and as we light this worship candle, also known as the Christ candle, we bring to mind the one who once said, I am light, you are light. I am light, you are light. We look to this flame affirming that new lights are ever waiting to break through and enlighten our ways, that new truths are ever waiting to break through and illumine our minds, that new loves are ever waiting to break through and warm our hearts. May this time draw us to the light and truth and love deep within and all around. Today is a new day. A day of celebration. A day to be together. A day to be renewed. A day that brings new challenges. A day that offers new opportunities. A day filled with possibilities. A day like no other day. A day that holds good moments. A day that may hold 
And we know, no matter what this day brings, God is with us. We are not alone. We are one, a diverse group of proudly kindred spirits, here not by coincidence, but because we choose to journey together. We are active and proactive. We care deeply. We live our love as best we can. Holy One, we celebrate that where people are gathered together in love, you are present and good things happen and life is full. We celebrate that we are immersed in your mystery, that our lives are more than they seem. We belong to each other and to a universe of great creative energies whose source and destiny is you, our God. We celebrate that your spirit beat in the heart of Jesus of Nazareth. The good news of your healing, embracing, and liberating love was heard by the broken, lonely, and all bound of life's sorrows and struggles. We celebrate that your spirit of peace and hope is present with us and through us, that in our struggle to love, we make real your presence in our world. And so, aware of the hurts and longings all of us carry, the awe and wonder that is around us, and the gifts of faith and this community of faith, we prayerfully pause and look around. And in the faces of one another, we become ever aware of the sacredness of each and all. In that awareness, may we act and speak and live.
as people of faith, we find meaning, wisdom, direction, inspiration in ancient words. We find wisdom and inspiration and meaning in contemporary words and ancient words that are spoken to us anew. As people of faith, as we gather, we turn to the stories of the Gospels. And in those stories, we listen to a variety of stories. Some of them are pretty straightforward. Others of them have a bit of an edge to them and challenge us. Others have twists to them. But all of them give us insights into what it means to live as faithful and faithful people. The gospel writers tell stories of Jesus, who was probably the ultimate storyteller. And so many stories of Jesus are told of Jesus traveling, and as he's traveling, crowds of people come and follow because they wanted to hear a story. They wanted to hear a, something that they could hold on to for the living of their days. They come to him um, wanting a bit of assistance sometimes wanting some understanding, sometimes wanting healing. They're all trying to figure it out, just as we're sometimes trying to figure it out. Who is God? What is God? What is life? What's the meaning of life? How am I to live out that faith in God through my daily living, in the midst of the good times and in the hard times? How are we meant to live? Often, very often, when Jesus was asked about those questions of what really matters, he spoke of love, about living love, and sharing love, and being love. Love, not that fuzzy sentiment of Hallmark cards, not the love of wine and roses, but a love that goes deep, a love that reaches out, a love that is risky, a love that comforts and confronts, a love that has a power to change us and our world, a love that is greater than any fear or hatred or prejudice, a love bigger than any bully, a love that overcomes oppression. The gospel writers tell the story of Jesus speaking of love and Jesus living love. At more than one occasion, Jesus said something like this, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. We call it the golden rule because it's a rule, a way of life that's found in all the major world religions, each expressed in a different way, but that basic sentiment, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Or put it this way, just as you want people to act towards you, act the same way towards them. But Jesus would often add, love, so love over and over and over by the way he lived over and over and over. It's the way he calls us to live. Just as you want people to act towards you, act the same way towards them. So, love. Try it with me. Just as you want people to act towards you, act the same way towards them. So, love. Sharing with you a contemporary rewrite of some familiar gospel stories. One day, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Rabbi, teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
the follower said to him, just as you want people to act towards you, act the same way towards them, so love. Again, try it with me. Just as you want people to act towards you, act the same way towards them, so love. Jesus, responding to the lawyer, said, What is written in the law? What do you read there? The lawyer answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, That's right. Make a habit of this and you will live. But wanting to save his face, the lawyer asked Jesus, But Jesus, really, who is my neighbor? And the followers of Jesus said, Just as you want people to act towards you, act the same way towards them. So love. Your neighbor, said Jesus, let me tell you a story. A traveler was going down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by a group of scoundrels, robbers. It was an ambush, really. The traveler never knew what hit him. He was beaten senseless. Everything was taken from him, even his clothes. Now this traveler lay naked at the side of the road. By chance, a priest, a minister, was going down the road. They saw the traveler in need, but immediately turned away, went to the other side of the road, and kept on going. Then a Levite, an assistant to the priest, came by, looked at the traveler, shook his head, and kept on going. But then along came a Samaritan, an outsider, a person people looked down upon. But when this Samaritan saw the traveler, his heart was broken and heavy. And he went over to the beaten man and bandaged him up. He soothed his cuts and his bruises with some oil and some wine. And then he put him on his donkey and brought him to a nearby inn and took care of him. The next day, the Samaritan took the money that he had earned the day before, basically all the money he had, and gave it to the innkeeper and said, Take care of this injured man for me. And when I wait make my way back here sometime soon. If you've had to spend anything else on this man, I will repay you. So Jesus said to the lawyer, which of these three do you think was a neighbor? The lawyer said, the one who did something, the one who loved. And Jesus' followers said, Just as you want people to act towards you, act the same way towards them, so love. And Jesus said, So go. Go. Start living like that. Go. Do the same. Go. Love. And so it is that we follow in the way of Jesus. We follow in the way of Jesus who found God within himself. And he shared that way for others to follow. We follow in the way of Jesus. That we might find God in ourselves. And in that, share our love with others.
When I can't take the first step, when all I'm holding is my breath, I pray that you are there. When I can't seem to forget, when I can't see the morning light yet, I pray that you are there. I pray love is greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. <clears throat> when I can't find another way, when I don't have the words to say, I pray that you are there. I pray love is greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than, greater than fear. Love is greater than, greater than. October 17, 2004, Taylor Grace Tour. October 17, 2004, Jenna Christine McLeod. September 25, 2005, Ben Alfred. Wallace. July 1st, 2007. Mac David Wallace. On those dates, your parents brought you to this place and to this font and to this community of faith. They brought you to the waters of baptism to celebrate you, your life, and the gift of your life. It was a day of celebration, and we spent time in our confirmation conversations talking about baptism and memories of baptism and what parents might remember or may not remember about that day. But in each case, the memories are ones of celebration. Baptism, for us as people of faith, is a sacrament, meaning that in baptism we come to understand who we are and who God calls us to be. In baptism we come to know the depth of God's love for us. Baptism for us is a celebration of love, of the gift of love. And on that day you were enfolded in love enfolded in the love of parents and grandparents and family and the church family. 
And on that day, promises and commitments were made. Made to live out promises about living out that love in the world. Promises about caring for you and creating a home that would be woven and grounded in faith and love. It was a day to celebrate God's presence and to, for all of us to affirm our commitment to live out that presence of God as we seek to love and serve others and to seek justice and resist evil as our creed proclaims. On the day of your baptism, you were named as God's beloved and welcomed into the family of God and welcome into the faith and the work and the ministry we share as part of this community of faith. On that day, promises were made on your behalf. And today, you are making those promises on your own behalf. When you were baptized, this church community promised a safe place a place where you would always know that you are welcome and accepted as you are for who you are. And that is good. For the past, I guess, over a month or so, I've been in conversation with Ben and Mac and Jenna and Taylor as we've talked about our faith and explored our faith and explored the promises that they are making this day. As I've said before, there's many times when I feel old or older than I did the day before. And to look back into baptismal records and to bring those dates to mind and pull up those bulletins and to think about being part of those baptisms and then being here today has really been a moving experience for me. And then to spend our time in conversation, because I know it's not easy to gather with the minister, right? You're going to spend whatever, an hour, an hour and a half, and what's she going to ask, and what are we going to do, and is she going to put me to the test? But I hope, that is my hope, that it's more conversation of exploring together. And it's also been a very profound experience for me because we tried something new together, something that I'd never tried before. And I don't know if it impacted um, Taylor and Jenna and Ben and Mac in the same way that it impacted me, but you'll see some of the results on the front of your bulletin. We created haikus, and I think we decided that if there's anything we'll remember from confirmation, we'll know 575 for the rest of our life. We may not remember anything else, but one day when we're on Jeopardy and they'll ask us, what, if what is 575? We'll know what it is. We'll know the answer. And so on the, the, the word cloud, as it's called, is some of those responses in a bit of a, a mishmash. But I want to thank them for those haikus and for the time of conversation because it was very meaningful and it certainly has deepened my faith and made me ponder my own faith and those promises that we do take at baptism and confirmation that are very important promises and how we live that out in our lives. And so we come to these waters of baptism just as we've come many times before, some of us coming on our own, some of us being brought by parents, some of us coming to confirm those promises, but we come to the waters where we're known, where we are told once more that we are God's and we are good and we are holy and we are loved. So I invite, let us gather as we celebrate the act of confirmation, inviting Taylor and Linda and Jenna and Diane and Ben and Al and Mac and Kathy to come forward. invite Kathy on behalf of our Picto United Church Council and congregation to present those who are being received 
into full membership of Pictou United Church and the United Church of Canada. On behalf of the congregation of Pictou United Church, I am happy to present Taylor Grace Tool, Jenna Christine McLeod, Ben Alfred Wallace, and Mac David Wallace, who desire to confirm the faith proclaimed in their baptism. Taylor, do you desire to confirm the faith proclaimed in your baptism? I do. Jenna, do you desire to, to confirm the faith proclaimed in your baptism? Mac, do you desire to confirm the faith proclaimed in your baptism? I do. And Ben, do you desire to confirm the faith proclaimed in your baptism? I do. And so I ask you, do you believe in God, the source of all love, in Jesus Christ, love incarnate, or as we've been saying, love made flesh, and in the Holy Spirit, love's power at work in us and our world? And with you, by your words and by your actions, will you join with others as together we follow in the way of Jesus, celebrating God's presence, living with respect in creation, loving and serving others, seeking justice and resisting evil. And will you support the work and ministry of this church, your church, with your time, talents, resources, and ongoing commitment? Linda and Diane, Al and Kathy, you have been chosen to be sources of support and you've been invited by Taylor and Jenna and Mac and Ben to affirm their commitment and support them in their commitment. And so I ask you, will you continue to support and encourage Taylor, Jenna, Ben and Mac as they continue to grow in faith and seek to live out their faith? I invite us also to take on promises to affirm our commitment of support, support and care. And so I ask you to join with me in the affirmation that's in your bulletin. As a baptized and baptizing church, we commit ourselves to continuing to support you and enfold you in love as together we seek to live out our faith through our words and by our actions. And so we come to the font, to those waters of baptism, the refreshing waters and the cleansing waters, the liberating waters, the welcoming waters those waters where we are invited to know who we are and whose we are. So Taylor, I invite you to come over with Linda and Kathy. And so Taylor, if I can get you over here, I'll get you over here, Steph. And Taylor, I invite you to touch the waters. And as you touch the waters, to know that you are with the holy and you are of holy. You are with God and you are of God. You are with love and you are of love. And thank you. Bend and look for a shorter pew. <laughs> we will place it. Taylor, Grace, remember you are God's beloved, called to be love in the world and for the world. Loving God by your spirit, continue to remind and strengthen Taylor 
that she might know that she is enfolded by your love and she is called to live out your love in our world. Blessed be. Amen. This is our first round of confirmation since the um, establishment of our prayer shawl group and our prayer shawl knitters thought it would be a nice gesture and symbol to present our confirmants with prayer shawls which are knitted in love and care and are reminders of the love and care of this community. Jenna. I want you to touch the water, Jenna. As you feel the waters of baptism, Jenna, know that you are with the holy and of the holy. You are with God and of God. You are with love and of love. There. <laughs> yep. Jenna, Christine, you are God's beloved, called to be love in the world and for the world. By the strength of your spirit, O oh God, continue to strengthen Jenna that she may be enfolded in your love, that she may continue to live out your love in our world. May it be so. Amen. I feel like we should have planned cheers in between or something. <laughs> You are with God and you are of God. You are with love and you are of love. Then you are God's beloved, called to be love in the world and for the world. By the gift of your spirit, O oh God, Strengthen Ben that he may know your spirit at work in him and through him. May he continue to know God's love and may he live out that love in the world. May it be so. Amen. Last but never least. <laughs> Again, invite you to touch the waters of baptism. And as you feel those waters, invite you to know that you are with the holy 
and of the Holy. You are with God and you are of God. You are with love and you are love. Mac, David, remember that you are God's beloved, called to be love in the world. By the strength of your spirit, O God, continue to enfold Mac in your love, that he may live out that love in the world. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to join with me in expressing our love and care and congratulations to the newest members of Picto United Church. that we celebrate two sacraments as gifts of Christ, baptism and Holy Communion. In these sacraments, the ordinary things of life, water, bread, wine, point beyond themselves to God and God's love, teaching us to be alert to the sacred in the midst of life. And so we share in the gifts of bread and wine, the gifts of bread and vine, we share in these holy, ordinary gifts. As we share in these gifts of bread and wine, the ordinary made holy, remind us, God, that we, your ordinary people, are also your holy people. Called to be like bread, nourishing others with your love in us. Called to be like wine, quenching the thirst of a world longing for justice and peace. Break open to us Christ's life of love. Pour into us Christ's love of life. Nourish and sustain us for your work in our world. May it be so. Amen. 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 I invite you to join with me in affirming our faith as we proclaim it through our new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit, We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Bread. Ordinary bread. From ordinary wheat. From ordinary grains. Ordinary grains harvested by ordinary hands. 
ground into ordinary flour, made into ordinary bread. But the ordinary becomes holy when we take and remember and eat and are nourished. Ordinary wine made from ordinary grapes, grown on ordinary vines, crushed into ordinary juice. But the ordinary is made holy when we take and we remember and we share and our thirsts are quenched and we go out to quench the thirsts of those who thirst for justice and compassion and love. The ordinary becomes holy in us and through us. And so we share in these gifts. The bread of life, the cup of God's love. Bless these gifts and break open our hearts. Bless these gifts and pour out love. I invite you to take and eat and be filled. the ordinary becoming holy in us and through us. Please join with me in prayer. Holy One, in gratitude, in deep gratitude for your love, for this day of celebration, for this meal, for this community, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people. For we have shared in all you have offered to us this day, and we cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many. <laughs> Maybe you can play us a little music that <laughs> feel silent.
I do hope when you have a moment, if you haven't already done so, to take a look at the Wordle. I know there's some writing that's smaller than others, but the three haikus were based on the words God, Jesus, and church. And so that's what those various lines reflect. I know you don't know which lines go which which haiku, but some of them you can, I think you can tell, but they're the ones about the church are an amazing reflection of what it means to be the church. And the experience for Taylor, Jenna, Mac, and Ben of what this church community means to them and why they've made the decision around confirmation. And so I continue to, to celebrate that. Um, it's, you know, it's wonderful to be able to celebrate with fine young adults in our midst who have made that commitment because it is a commitment and they've made that commitment and I feel very honored to have been part of that commitment and to be part of this church that has nurtured them in faith and raised them in faith and provided a place for them to call home. We are called to be the church. That's what our creed proclaims and we seek to do that prayerfully and faithfully. And so I thank you for your ongoing support that enables us to be the church, to be the church within these walls and more essentially beyond these walls. Your gifts of time and talents, your ongoing financial support, all of the resources you offer do make a difference. And it's because we are able to join together and to work together that we are able to be the church in this place, in this time, in this community, and in our world. Thanks be to God. Before I move into our closing blessings and the remainder pieces of worship, just a reminder that I've been asked to ask those who were confirmed, Ben and Mac, Jenna and Taylor and their support persons and prayer shawl presenters to gather at the front following worship for pictures. I believe that's my instructions, so to please <laughs> do that following worship. And also, again, my apologies around the, my misspoke around the committal service on Friday. It is indeed for our beloved Marjorie Henderson and Friday, and the information is there in your bulletin. There is a world that weeps, yearning for a sign of mercy. The heart within us has no hands but our own. There is a friend in anguish besieged by unexpected pain. The heart of God within us has no ears but our own. There is a multitude harmed and weary from prejudicial ways. The heart of God within us has no eyes but our own. There is a stranger facing death alone, wondering if anyone will remember the heart of God within us has no tears but our own. There is a life, hollow and lonely, longing for someone to walk alongside. The heart of God within us has no feet but our own. We are God's. We go ever aware that God is at work around us, beside us, within us, and through us. Mm -hmm. 